All right, all right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just gonna wait a bit until it's maybe like five so that everyone is here and then I will start. Hello everyone, by the way. Hello, hello. Thanks for being here. Yeah, so the latency is relatively low, so it's like 10 seconds. So if you want to ask me a question or anything, uh, we'll actually see it pretty quickly. It will be good. Um, I didn't put like the lowest latency because I'm just afraid that uh, it would make the stream lag a bit. So it's like a low latency, so like 8-10 seconds between your comments and when I see it. Which is not bad. Okay, let's just wait like a couple of minutes more and let's go. I, I will be back in, in a sec. <laughs> no, that was not the case actually. Uh, okay. How many people? 16. Nice. 16 people. Okay, good. Uh, I will start in a second. Right now, actually. Yeah, so don't hesitate to ask me questions. Uh, I might not answer right away, but I will try to answer. I mean, it's not like, it's not like there is 2,000 people watching, so I'm still going to be able to answer the comments. Um, hello, hello. So let's make sure that the volume is good. So my voice is way too loud, hold on. Okay, that's better. The volume of the stream might be a bit quiet, so feel free to adjust it yourself. I don't have any timpani in this track, so... Maybe, uh, maybe just email me about that. So what I'm gonna do here is first play the track uh, in its entirety, and we'll try to fix all the level issues because right now there is many, many level issues. And once we fix the level issues, we're gonna go into more detail into the individual stuff. So let's first play the whole track and see the levels.
Okay. That's a bit better. I just tweaked the volumes as, as I listened. Yeah. Still some problems, but we, we can tweak the levels as we go. I'm just trying to get the main balance first, and then we can go more into detail. There's just one hit which is super loud, which I want to make sure it's not too loud. Because since I have a console emulation, uh, I need to make sure that the input volume going into the uh, plugin chain isn't too loud. Because otherwise I'm going to be clipping my, my plugin uh, my, my, um, console emulation. Yeah, this hit here. It's fine now. By the way, you can't see my two... Uh, my two screens, but I have basically a huge list of tracks here, which is all the tracks from the this piece. And I just tweaking the volume sometimes here, but you can't see that because it's in the second screen. But it's okay. It's not really important. And most of the, most of the information is here, so it's good. Okay. So um I mean, I don't really have a point to to start. Sometimes I mix the strings first, sometimes I mix the pads first, the intro first, but it doesn't really matter. Let's see, maybe we mix the intro first. It's too loud. It's too loud. No, a bit too loud. Just gonna lower my voice. Lower my voice a bit. Okay, I can start with making the piano, I guess. So. This one already has a reverb. This one is dry though. So this one I'm gonna put a bunch of reverb on. Uh, so I have a strings, brass and queer reverb. Uh, it's actually very similar. All of three are holes, normal holes. So I think I'm gonna go with the brass reverb, which is the same reverb as the strings one, except it's a bit longer. It's like um, 221 seconds instead of uh, two for the strings. So I kind of want a long reverb. Actually, maybe I'm just going to have a custom, really, like a custom reverb on the piano. Yeah, let's try something a bit, actually, something really long, because it's a slow piano, so we can go really long, no problem. Let's see. We can go even four seconds here. But let's see. Let's first balance it with the high layer. I like that it's not too wet because it's like chords, you know, chords, so you don't want to make it overly wet. And we have the top layer to have that huge reverb, which it already has. So I think I want the top one to be brighter.
Thanks, man. All right. All right. Still a bit loud there. Yeah. I think the top layer is actually not wet enough, like it needs to be a crazy reverb, so I'm thinking uh, Valhalla Shima. Even more of that. Even though it sounds like there is already some of it, but whatever. Okay, not too much modulation. Yeah, it's like it's nice, I like that. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's nice like that, right? a bit long. I can reduce the size a bit, maybe. Okay, let's see how it sounds now. This hits. That's too loud. Yeah. Okay, whatever. We're gonna take care of that later. Uh, the post EQ reverb is just like a filter, like the same one on everything, like it's 18 dB per octave at 110 just to filter the sub from the reverb. Because in any of the strings, brass and queer reverb, I don't want any sub, so yeah. So uh, there is also one more piano layer here, so I don't know, it's, that's piano high, piano high, piano chords, and that's piano... Three. I don't know. I don't know why they're separated. It looks like it's the same kind of piano. Let me see. A piano support, okay. It's just one note. You know what? I'm just gonna group it on the um, group it on the piano chords because it's it should be part of the same thing, so it can be on fourteen here. Yeah, so that way it's also part of the river. It also has the river that we put. Yeah, nice. If I want to mix it, I can just tweak the volume here. So it's it's fine. Okay, so I think we can maybe put a delay on the piano. But a very slight one, so before the reverb, which is already huge, uh, maybe... Um, 
Edge delay. Oh, I need the tempo. Uh, Julien, are you watching? I need the tempo of the track. <laughs> yeah, I composed this track 50-50 with uh, someone else from France, a friend from France. Uh, you know what, I can just maybe guess the tempo. So first, actually, it's 6-8. I should maybe put the right time signature in the project. That would actually help. Um, eight, six, six, eight. Uh, yeah, that's it. And then, like, to guess the tempo, uh, let's see maybe if I can al align align some stuff. Hold on. Okay, that should be. I need to figure out this tempo. Pretty slow. I guess it's pretty slow, but it could be double also. Doesn't really matter. I just want to find the. Actually, that looks about right. No, it's not right. Uh, that's not right. That's very annoying. Because for the delay, I actually need the, need the tempo. Um, yeah, it's a track I help composing, but it's not 100% my track. Let me try to find the tempo. This is weird. It's not like locking on the... Cause I'm, I'm in 6-8, so it should walk. But it's not walking. I don't know why. I can't get it to lock on the grid. Maybe let's try bigger. <laughs> content. This is pure content. Um, hold on. Let's try. Maybe no, that's not it. You know what, never mind. Uh, hold on, I'm just gonna start Skype and I ask him the tempo. Because <clears throat> otherwise, it's gonna be a bit impossible. No, I think it's the same tempo everywhere. <laughs> Whatever, I'm gonna do the delay later. Uh, let's turn it off for now. Okay, so let's make something interesting. Uh, maybe the strings, I guess that's interesting. So the intro is pretty good. And that's true, I could detect the tempo, but I don't know if it's working well. Uh, either a tap, wait, either a tempo tap. Maybe you're right, I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, there is. Hold on, I need to find it where it is. Uh, simple. Where is he clicking? Hold on, I'm just watching a video. Okay, I think I got it. So there, tap. Okay, let's try to let's try to find it this way. If I don't, it's okay. I'm just gonna. Okay, I think it's 110. 
Thank you, by the way. This is really helpful. I don't know why it's still off in the grid. Maybe that's my grid that's messed up. Like it should start right on the grid, uh, unless the beginning was messed up, but it shouldn't be messed up. Like it's weird. Maybe it's my time signature, which is 6 8. Am I doing it correctly? Is the numerator 6 and denominator 8, or is it the opposite? No, there is no option here for 6, so it has to be. I'm not being stupid, I guess. Okay, never mind. But let's not waste time on this. This is boring, so let's move on to some interesting stuff. So, the strings. Okay, the intro is just one viola track or whatever, so. Let's actually go into the climax and. Uh, Let's balance the strings first. Actually, let's put reverb first. I guess about 50% send. 55. Let's put 55% send on a two second reverb. To automate, uh, I might have to automate the violins because they seem to be a bit loud in the build up. But I'm first gonna mix it for the climax and then I will automate if needed. Maybe for you, I'm just gonna write what this is. So cello, stack, bass, stack. Violin one, stack. Violin two. Viola. Fluid, fluid shorts, stack. Okay, that's a uh, cello sustain. That's another one. That's weird. Let me see. Let me see what this is. Sustain strings full. Ah, it's just like a ensemble patch for something. Okay, system solo, and that's uh, trailer brass, CSS, Cine brass, Ava, Strike Force, um, some stuff from from Juggernaut. Uh, I don't know everything because I didn't see everything, but yeah. Okay, so sustain strings. That's probably like an ensemble, ensemble patch. Let me check. 
yeah, just for the intro and like it's like a pad kind of strings. So ensemble. Okay. Legato viola. The viola sustain. Legato violin one. I think we got everything except track number three, which is second violin left. There is two second violin tracks. So that's violin stack right. Okay, I think I got everything. Oh okay, yeah, thank you for for the file, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you PewDiePie, I don't want your notification right now. Okay. So now let's do like an overall EQ to kind of uh, first apply a first layer of tweaking to the overall sound of the strings. So right now it's a bit boxy, so let's... Let's first apply a, a light EQ just to kind of fix the main frequency response. And then we can go into detail. I'm um, just applying a high boost, um, it's like an air EQ, if you wonder how it looks like, it's like a, a boost from 6k to like 20k. And like when it says 3.6 here, it's actually like 7 dB, or like 6 dB at like 15k or something, so it's like a high shelf. But I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like super sizzly in the very high end, so I'm gonna use a high cut, so I'm gonna have like a high shelf and then a high cut. Just to kind of prevent any kind of super, super noisy, like 15k, 20k, so maybe 18k for the high cut. 18k. Like a very gentle slope, just to kind of roll off the shelf so it's not like shelving until the end, you know what I mean? So by the way, even if the strings sound too acute and too aggressive by themselves, <clears throat> what matters in the context of the mix, so don't pay attention to how they sound right now. I'm just kind of guessing like how much I will have to boost for them to sound good in the mix. Okay. Let's go into the individual tracks. This cello is resonant, resonant around 350. So I'm not trying to boost the bass on the cello because it's uh, octave above the bass. I'm not trying to not trying to replace the bass. Just kind of kind of make it a bit more exciting than the bass.
Yeah, the base doesn't need a lot. This is a bit boomy. And not very defined, but the lower the lower frequencies are actually more defined. Yeah, this is a bit like boomy and constant. I'm not a huge fan of that. But it's very narrow. Okay, that's, that's decent. Yeah, because it's like a staccato heavy track. Okay, so... <sighs> it's not a snare, it's just uh, the strings by themselves. Uh, so, th this violin is good. But it gets a bit boomy, but just on certain notes. Around 600. I don't want to do too much to it, actually. I just want to maybe like multi band compress it a bit at 600. Uh, like, you see, on, on this high note, it needs absolutely no mid cut. But a bit before, yeah. It's like a way of EQing without EQing when it's not needed. Just a ratio of four, so a ratio pretty high for like a sounds like that. But it's just because I don't want to compress when it's too low. Like when these these MIDI harmonics are too low, I just want to compress when they are too high. So when the mud comes in, it's like on the dun -dun, like on the top notes of this series of notes. Uh, let me read the comments a bit. Yeah, I mean snares can be good. I think there is a snare on this track actually later, but I didn't play it right now. I didn't play it yet. Uh, like you just hear them after a while, like the the resonant frequency, like they just come like a like a resonance. You know, you know, you feel like a peak is kind of disrupting you from the sound, like the main meat of the sound. So you want to nudge that peak, so it's not actually taking over the whole sound, and that's how you create clarity. The so same problem here. It's slightly muddy, but not too much. I'm gonna see if I can if I can do it with a um, multi band as well. Because it's not all the notes, you know, it's like just certain notes. Yeah, just that low note a bit. It's not even a lot. Okay. There is also another one.
This one is just really high. Doesn't have any, doesn't have any mud. It's actually clear. Let me just check if there is any, like, low rumble. Yeah, not even. I'm not even gonna EQ that for now, I'm just gonna leave a flat EQ for now. Let me boost it a bit. Okay. So, Viola. It seems it's really loud in the climax. Pretty quiet here. Might have to do an automation about this. Actually, it's not really needed to do an automation because it's the viola is just doubling the violin, so I, I already I already have enough of that pattern actually. So I don't need the viola to really reinforce that pattern anymore. So whatever. It doesn't matter if it's low. Except here. Because then it's playing an actual counter line. It's fine, the volume is fine. That's CSS. Okay, so we have some work to do in the villa here because it's muddy. So in that case, it's a constant mud, so I'm not doing multiband. Okay. Good. So fluid shots. Uh, hold on. Okay, so fluid shots. Some of the moves I do here I might correct later or just change later in the context of the mix, but you know, you can't just mix like all 80 tracks at once, so you have to begin somewhere. So I'm kind of guessing like how I want the strings to sound and changes might occur later. It's already pretty damn clear compared to before. By the way, the air on the bass is awesome. And on the chili as well. So some volumes might be wrong and need some automation, but that's better. The 
these hits are terrible. Yeah, this layer is terrible. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Okay, so let's take care of the brass. I'm gonna do the pending later, I guess. Right now it's slightly too, slightly too narrow, uh, even on the strings. Uh, but I'm first gonna do the EQ of the brass, then I'm probably gonna take care of the pending of the strings and the brass. So starting with the reverb first, of course. Uh, so the strings I put like six, uh, 50, 55 on the strings. Uh, I mean the brass I'm gonna put like 75 on the sand or 80. It's a bit long maybe, like let's do 214. Okay, uh, it's a bit dark, so brass also needs a high boost because everything needs a high boost in orchestral music, <laughs> uh, pretty much. So the brass, I like this EQ because this EQ has a really nice curve uh, for the brass. It's from Waves, uh, red, the console red. But I mean, uh, to show you how it looks like, this EQ is basically a curve at 6k, so on the brass it's like 6k, 6k plus, like that. You can do like 6k like that. That's what it looks like. Um, but I'm gonna do with the red EQ because it's amazing. Hold on. cases you have to crank the knobs to the max and that's one of the situations where you want to do that. No, don't crank the knobs to the knobs to the max all the time. But in this plugin it's nice because it's only 6 dB, you know, so it's fine. So let me name the tracks for you quick. Low brass. Trombone. Horn chords. Horn lead. Solo trumpet. And it's like a ensemble. It's supposed to be a trumpet, like an ensemble trumpet, but it's like high brass ensemble, pretty much. Like it's supposed to be a trumpet, but yeah. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, I think this track is kind of inspired by your style a bit and uses some of the samples that you that you're used to, so. Let's actually do some EQing. Yeah, solo trumpets in Charlie music, you know, right? So I'm gonna cut the lowest fundamental from the hold because it's, I mean, the low brass. 
It's just too boomy. Not needed. All this range is gonna be occupied by the horns, so I definitely wanna try to clear it up in the low brass a bit. Like especially like the 1k I guess, it's kind of going to be the horns range, so... Like all of this, it's not really... But you do want the low mids, you wanna keep the, keep the low mids. As long as they're not too resonant. Like see there's like a peak here. Which is not really nice. So you don't want too much of that, but you want like the fatness. So I guess I'm gonna do some multi-band on, on this track. I mean, I, I've mixed, I have mixed so many tracks using this low brass patch. So now I know how to mix it after a while. It's already the same thing. You know, it's pretty much always the same thing. So first EQ, then uh, it needs some multi-band because like there is some volume differences between the low fundamentals, between the low bass. It's just kind of wobbling around a bit, uh, and the reason it... Oh, hold on. Uh, I have to close my Skype again. Uh, <laughs> the reason it's wobbling is because there is several uh, brass players, and they are phasing with each other, so you get this kind of wobble in the, in the low end, which you don't want because it's gonna make the bass disappear. And in this particular track, we don't even have a sub-bass, like a synth sub-bass to kind of give some consistency to the low end, so we definitely want this low brass this low brass to be very consistent. So I'm gonna go crazy with like a 6 ratio. That's how you make a bass consistent. And I don't like the peaky low mids. I want the low mids to be more consistent without any ugly resonance, so... Especially this one here. I'm gonna see if there is any resonance other than the one I noticed. And if there is no other one, I will just target this one. Yeah, okay, it's pretty much just this one. I don't know if you can hear it, it's like a peak. It's kinda like a... There. Yeah, it's kind of like a single peak just at one point, so I'm just gonna target it very specifically with uh, dynamic EQ. So waves F6 is good. is good, so I'm just gonna find the frequency. Two sixty four. Now I'm gonna put a point at two sixty four just to make sure it's not with a pretty pretty big range so that I can actually just target this harmonic and just notch it down when it's peaking. You can see it here. Yeah, I need quite a bit actually, <laughs> minus 15. Like it, it's really like distracting, you know? You can see it's just occurring on that particular note. It could be because of the room, it could, could be because of, I don't know, the instruments, but... Like, you don't really notice it until I remove the dynamic EQ. It's just that much cleaner, you know? It's just much cleaner. Yeah, as soon as I remove it, it's like... Mm. I don't know if you can hear it. So yeah, that's why I'm gonna use that. Uh, 
then we're gonna put um I mean, it's pretty clean, so let's move on to something else. So very obviously the horn is too boomy. So in that case I'm not gonna use multiband because it's pretty consistent the way it's boomy. Because since there is... Actually, never mind, I'm gonna use multiband because it's kind of like... I want like a very consistent brass sound. And you can get these peaks here. The same, the, the reason for these peaks is the same exact reason, it's phasing. So you get several players playing and sometimes they end up more in phase than other times and because they have slight pitch differences, phase differences, so sometimes the waveforms add and you get that sudden peak and then they cancel again and it dips again. So I don't want that. So of course I'm gonna use the multiband to kind of uh, EQ as well as control at the same time, so compress and EQ at the same time because they're still too loud. This harmonic is actually too loud. So I'm gonna do two things at the same time. Awesome. See how much more relaxing the sound is now. I guess cleaner, not relaxing, but cleaner. Okay, great. That's gonna be it for the horn. The horn calls, I might do something very similar because it's the same patch, I guess. Saying so, yeah, I think so it is. Uh, I need a filter on this one as well, uh, so I'm just gonna copy the same filter, don't want any rumble, it's just gonna add up for no reason. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, trombones, beatboxy as well. And the thing is, they're gonna be enough in the same spot as the horns. And it's gonna be too much here. Yeah. So I'm kind of gonna consider the trombones as like a low brass thing and clear some room in the mids. And even add a bit of low mid. Okay, so let's see how it compares now to the without no no EQ. So just gonna turn off all the EQs and then suddenly add them in. You can feel it's clean, uh, it's clean, and the consistency of the bass is consistent. Thanks to that. To be honest, I could probably put two of these in a row, and it wouldn't even matter. But 
but that's enough. Um, So, uh, I didn't pan yet, maybe I could pan, uh, it would be a good idea, good idea. By the way, if I'm stuttering a bit, it's because I'm hearing myself with like a 50 millisecond delay because I want to monitor my voice. And try to speak when you hear yourself with like <laughs> a bit of delay in the air, it's very confusing. Um, yeah, the choir actually, let's do the choir because it's fun. I'm just gonna group uh, Lacrimosa in the bus. Lacrimosa. Lacrimosa. Ah, ah, ah. And uh, route to this track only. So this that's the master bus. So that's Lacrimosa sustain. And that's Lacrimosa Satakato. And then that's. Uh, I think that's Lori. That's Lori Ann Oz, a very, very good singer. It's her library. And the choir is a bit messy here. Maybe I might need to fix that in the stem. Actually, it's fine. I think it's messy on purpose. Uh, so, like Rimaza, let's see what we can do. So, uh, on choirs, like there is a kind of important frequency. It's like 4K because 4K is the crying baby frequency, and it's like the human voice frequency where you can like hear it the most. And if you want to make a choir cut, it's generally a good idea too. Yeah, I don't know about the transitions. It's fine. You know, once it's drowned in reverb. Nobody's gonna care about the transitions. Um, nobody's really gonna care. I just need a lot of reverb on this. Uh, let me do the solo vocal actually. Let's do the solo vocal first. So it's a pure mono recording, so to make it more interesting. Of course I'm gonna put reverb, but I'm not just gonna put reverb because it's still too mono and I want it to really fill the spectrum. So I'm gonna put a doubler to add the first layer of widening. And then I'm gonna put the reverb um, to really make it make it super. Ah, you will always know. So see the doubler, what it's doing. So no doubler. And doubler. So it's like creating even more width than the normal reverb sound. Uh, I don't want it too loud, I want it quite subtle, so I'm gonna put the extra voices at minus 10. So Doubler is basically creating extra voices at a slightly different pitch and slightly different delay. So you can see here the delay values and the pitch detune values. So it's kind of like simulating as if there were several recordings of the same voice and they were panned hard left and hard right. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of plugins. And that gives you, uh, that gives you a really nice wide sound. Because you kind of get the, the impression of double tracking. Um, or like multiple tracking, you know. Uh, but you don't want it too noticeable. So if I just bypass it now. So no, no double. Double. See, it kind of blends the sound slightly more as if it was not like a mono recording, so I like that. So it's very subtle, but it's good. And with the reverb, then it's gonna be enough. So reverb, double, it's really a great combo to make like a mono vocal really blend with the mix. Because like, even if you put the reverb, there is some kind of mono element still to it. It's not enough, and that's why I like to put the double. 
So. And you can hear how wide it is now. Uh, now the, the EQ is just kind of crappy, so I need to tweak that. It's super too much here. Let me just see if it's consistent throughout, and if it's not consistent, I'm gonna fix the problem with multiband uh, instead of EQ. It's pretty consistent, so... So I guess in the mix, in solo it might sound a bit harsh, but in the mix it's going to be nice to have that treble boost. So the choir now, uh, reverb first, a shit ton of reverb obviously, um, so for my choir reverb I use a, a reverb technique you will actually see in my course, it's interesting but it sounds like a, you can also use a normal reverb, just like a whole reverb, a pretty long one, so like 2.2 milliseconds, try not to go like in the 3-4 seconds, uh, if you go like in the 3-4 seconds then you kind of blur the definition too much, there's no point. Uh, you should rather add more wet signal and keep the decay times more reasonable. So keep the decay times more like 2, 2.5. Don't go into the, like the 3, 4 because it's too much. And add more wet instead if you want a wetter sound. Don't add more tail basically. Oh my god, that's so muddy. That is because I put a lot of reverb I guess. Uh, let's try. 90% first on the sends. Yeah, it just needs serious EQing. Um, check my volumes on the mix rack so that I don't actually clip the console emulation. Ah, oh, it's here, never mind. I don't want to clip the console emulation otherwise it's going to be distorting. It's fine. Uh, the other one... need to check for the stack at all. fine as well okay so let's eq so of course there is too much low mids so something like that just okay maybe not the max maybe 3.5 on the top shelf and and like a high mid also boost Like on the 4K. 4K, 4K is pretty good. But actually, actually what I'm gonna do is that I'm ha I'm gonna have two different EQs. I'm gonna have one for the one for the staccato and one for the sustain. Um, so I'm not gonna put the 4K boost on the on the on all of them. So not on the bus. I'm gonna go individually. Uh, I'm gonna go individually. And I'm gonna put more 4K on the staccato. So it's still going through the bus. Both of them are going through the bus, right? With, with this EQ we just did. But the staccato, I'm gonna add an extra 4K boost. So I don't wanna go in the SS region. I wanna go in the below region.
Like that. Yeah, not like that. Yeah, the live I think will be like uh, unlisted for a bit because we want to pitch this track to a library. And we're not sure if the library will, will want it public yet. Uh, just in case it's going to be like private, like unlisted uh, on YouTube. I think if you save the link above, if you save the URL, you can watch it afterwards. It's going to be made public, but not right away, basically. I'm doing good, Patrick. I'm doing good. Yeah, I know. You're watching on the on the lib. Oh, okay. You are replaying to Tom. Never mind. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there is uh, lots of people from TMA here, but also some random people who uh, come from Facebook. Because I, I advertise also on Reddit, so there may maybe there is some Reddit people. If you're here, welcome. Whoa, almost 30 people. That's crazy. I was not expecting that many. So let's try to mix in the choir. Yeah, it's kind of disappearing. I'm gonna try to maybe make it more. Yeah, I don't like the flow of one word. One word is a little bit too loud compared to how it should be. Uh, so let me try to tweak the flow a little bit with some volume automation. Um, where is my choir? Okay. See, that's that's the one here. It shouldn't pick. It shouldn't pick here. And it should actually be louder in the middle, so volume, volume automation here. And let's lower kind of everything first a bit. And then we're gonna sculpt it in more detail. That's kind of going to be a peak. Um, shouldn't rise here shouldn't rise at all um shouldn't rise at all okay something like that yeah still rising But it needs to it needs to go up again, I guess. Ah, that's better. You don't have this this weird peak here. This one can be a bit higher. Okay, that, that's much better. This one also I can cut a bit. Just a bit, not too much. 
Um, I just wanted to be kind of more even. Uh, oops, not like that. I guess something like that, actually. Yeah. It's a bit too sudden, so let me try this. Yeah, just to kind of get that cut here. Otherwise I can feel it a bit more. Okay, that's good. I'm not sure about all the libraries. I know there is Trello Brass and Cinebrass, but I'm not sure if it's all. Uh, Julien, if you can confirm. I think that's pretty much it, though. Okay, so let's see if we can make some sound design, because that's pretty interesting. Uh, I thought I would do the panning of the brass and strings, but I mean... I guess I can do it. Yeah, whatever, let's do the panning. Uh, so the brass. So, that's Lacrimosa. Um, yeah, if you want to rewatch the video, uh, save the link in the URL because uh, it's going to be non-listed. So if you want to watch it, I guess the, the link will be the same. So it's not going to be private, so you can still watch it afterwards. Just uh, save the link. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Trailer Brass is great for the horn and trombones. Um... But I wanted to do the panning. So for the panning, I'm going to think about what's the, how many brass tracks I have, when are they playing together, and how I can kind of arrange the panning so that it's even from left to right, while still being wide. So I have to kind of think what I have and kind of tweak that. So I think the horn I'm going to put in the middle because it's, it's a very, very bassy sound. It's not like a normal low brass. It's like a super subby low brass. So it's like... I think it sits well there, and then I can kind of pan around the rest, I guess. So... So I know that the horns and trombones are playing always together, so I can definitely put one on the left, one on the right. At least for the... Oh yeah, I forgot to put something on the brass. Uh, to make it wider, I put, I put a secret plugin. It's like a really short room. Like just like a short room reverb without any tail. Just only reflections. Uh, let me see, yeah, this one. It's the 2016 stereo room. Uh, it's a very like shorter tail here. Just to kind of get a, a sense of a room. It adds a little bit more depth. You can hear here. If I turn it off. On. Right, it gives a slight roominess without sounding weird at the same time. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Very subtle though, but it's nice. <laughs> many plugins, but you don't need many, see? Uh, from the beginning, I've just been using like my reverb, my go-to reverb, multiband and EQ. That's pretty much all I've been doing. So don't think you need all these plugins. You don't. Trust me, you don't. You don't at all. It's just like toys. Uh, it's not needed. It's just toys at one point, you know. You need a good EQ. You need a good multiband. You need a good compressor. You need maybe like a good tape saturation. It's not. It's kind of optional actually. And if you have that, you're set. A uh, uh, good reverb, of course. Good reverb. If you have a stock reverb and your DAW doesn't really have a nice one, you might want to invest in a good reverb. But yeah, don't stress about the plugins.
top 5 plugins uh, Pro Q2, Pro MB, uh, Waves F6 for the multiband, uh, I mean for the dynamic EQ. Uh, uh, oh, of course, the uh, Slate VMR uh, for all the plugins. It's great. Virtual Mix Rack. So many good things here. Um, and I mean, there is technically several plugins, but it's technically one plugin. And number five would be, number five would be my Verbsuit Classics from Slate also, because it has the Brickst emulation. Uh, you could use also Liquid Sonics, uh, the Liquid Sonics Seventh Heaven reverb, which is basically the same thing uh, in like a different interface. Not exactly the same thing, it's a bit different, but it's the same developers, uh, see Liquid Sonics here. Uh, so BrickST, it's, um, it's the most popular reverb, I guess, for film music. It's a very popular reverb. And it's really great, because it's a very thick sound. I might pan the lead a bit less than the chords, the horn chords. But I do have the trumpet to compensate for the lead horn on the left. I, I mean, it's not really a trumpet, it's like a horn slash trumpet slash goes high in the end, you know? So I can put that on the right. As well as this trumpet. Oh yeah, I forgot to EQ the trumpets actually when I did the horns. And I'm stupid, I forgot to continue the trumpets. I stopped at the horn lead. So there is the solo trumpet. I know it's a crime in trailer music. It's a crime in trailer music, but I need to EQ the solo trumpet. That's a Chapman trumpet from, from Amberton. I think that's the highest dynamic. Uh, but maybe Julien, uh, Julien, if you're watching, can you check quickly that the trumpet is actually the highest dynamic? The solo trumpet. Uh, Chapman trumpet. Because it would be nice to get more bite out of it, but I don't, I'm not sure it can. If not, it's okay. Okay, it is? Okay, cool. Well, it's fine. So this horn kind of thing is too boomy as well. It's fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they need to pay him more to play louder. Oops, I think there is a problem with this stem here. I, th 
think it's supposed to be layering the trumpet. It's not though. Actually, no, it's nice like that because it's, uh, I think it's nicer like that. It adds more contrast. It's fine. Let's see if it bothers in the mix otherwise. Yeah, it's a pretty cool ending, right? Yeah, Waves has crazy, crazy sales sometimes. Like if you if you wanna buy like a big waves bundle, do it on the sales. Like if you don't do it on the sales, it's gonna cost you like ten grand. If you do it on the sales, it's gonna cost cost you like one grand. You know, like there is really really interesting sales with waves, so you can get them really really dirt cheap. Don't hesitate to to watch out for the waves and like use their newsletter or whatever, because they seem expensive. Like when you look at the plugins on this website, they seem expensive, but they're not that expensive. <laughs> So there is one thing here, uh, towards the end, there is a Bram kind of announcing the end, but it's actually in the, in the baseline of the end, you know, like... So it's kind of like preparing you for the end, so it's like a slight voluntary um, kind of dissonance, so it, it needs to be there but not too loud for the first Brahms. <laughs> But uh, uh, when it becomes consonant again, then it can be loud, right? So I need to kind of turn down the, the first ones, because they're still supposed to be dissonant, but more subtle. Uh, and the brass bus is just a treble boost, uh, 6k... It's kind of this, like a 6k plus boost, 6db. This curve is kind of like a high shelf at 6k, basically. So let me find the Brahms, because I need to find these Brahms here. These ones. Uh, and I'm gonna lower these. At least in the beginning. Okay, and the, the, the last one is actually in consonants with the bass line. This is gonna be loud. Uh, this is gonna be quiet though. Tell me if I'm talking too much, because I know I talk a lot. Maybe I'm talking too much. Really, the F6 is on 29 Oh, get it, $29. Like, if you need a dynamic EQ, get it, it's good. Okay. Uh, that's all good. Maybe we can do some panning now on the strings as well. You know what? I think the stream is kind of pressuring me in a way to mix faster. Like, I've never mixed a track this fast. Like. I'm not like wasting time just listening and listening again. I'm actually doing shit, which is good. I should stream more often the, the mixing. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do that most of the time because, of course, if it's an unreleased track, I can't just stream it. But it's kind of secret, you know, you can't just leak uh, the, the music you mix for people. So, <laughs> But it's actually good. I think it motivates me to be faster. Um, okay, so CSS is already a bit pre-panned. Uh, but uh, I can kind of make it even wider than default. So 
So there's so many stack tracks, I need to figure out which ones are going to be on the left and which ones are going to be on the right. So as much as possible, I'm going to try to stick to the natural padding of the library. But if there is too many stacks on the left, I'm just going to have to put some on the right. So the base. Yeah. Like 16 percent right, cello 20 percent right. Okay. The viola maybe in the middle. As violin too. Sounds good where it is. I think I might just put the fluid shorts on the right. It's actually gonna allow me to pan the violins harder on the left because if I have something similar to pan on the right, uh, it's gonna more compensate each other. Recording something like this? Well, I have no idea. Because like this is a lot of players, you know, to get this kind of sound. So I think yeah, it's, it would be pretty expensive to record something like this. I think Daniel might tell you. I wonder. Actually, I'm curious. Like to record a track like that. Hmm. I would be guessing like five thousand at least, like three three to seven thousand euros, but I might be wrong. an idea. I've never done this, but what if I just swap the left and right channels? Because like the, the recording here sounds a bit on the left by default, and, and that kind of feeling of panning by default is caused by, of course, volume differences in the left and right ear, but also timing differences. What if I swap the left and right channels? Then I can maybe invert the timing differences between the left and the right ear, and make the strings feel right by default in a more realistic way. Oh, wait, do I have a plugin to swap the channels? I think maybe that's gonna work. Um, I must have a plugin, a BX uh, thing, Brainworks has a thing. Where is it? Wait, no, it's not this one. Um, Brainworks control, maybe. Hold on. I'm onto something, I'm onto something. Maybe. Can I swap? Oh, it is that? Maybe it's that. Yeah! Oh, that's amazing! Oh, that's amazing! Because like, if you just keep the... Okay, I, I just discovered something, guys. Okay, so if you just pan a recording that sounds naturally in the left by default, like, you know, what gives the feeling of panning is not, is not just the difference between the volume of the left and the right ear. It's also the, the, it's also the timing, right? Because if a player is on the left in a stereo recording, then the sound is going to reach the left mic first and the right mic after. So if you actually invert the sides, like I mean the two channels, then you actually invert the timing difference as well. So it sounds like the, it was actually properly reverted. That's, that's really amazing. That's, that's, like a, that's like a life changer for me, you know? So many people, like when they want to invert something, they just like force the panning like 80% to the right to make it feel on the right. But it still feels off, you know, because just check this out. If I just put like 50% uh, on the right for this, and I just keep the normal phase. See, it feels off. It's like a needle. You can't point, pinpoint it, right? 
And if I put it on, it's more accurate. It's just accurate. That's that's amazing. Yeah, so basically that's because if you just force the panning, you're just changing the volume between the channels, not the timing. If you invert the channels, you invert the timing as well. No, seriously, this is... I never... Oh my god, I wish I knew that sooner. Oh my god, I'm in love with this plugin. Well, I mean, lots of plugins can do that, actually, it's a basic thing, but I never thought of doing that. <laughs> you don't understand, this is... This is a pretty big game changer for me. Like, it means, like, if I have a library, which I don't like the panning, instead of just forcing the panning and having it sound weird, I can have it sound really accurate in, like, the opposite side by doing this. This is, like, a real, real game changer for me. It means I can pan anything I want without having the panning sound weird and kind of off, you know? Like, you can't just force different volumes into different channels. You need to also swap the timing difference in the, in the two ears because that's what gives the feeling of panning as well. That's, that's amazing. That's a game changer for me. <laughs> uh, that's Brainworks BX Control V2, but uh, lots of plugins can swap. Just look for a free plugin to swap the left and right channels. I'm in love. Yeah. It's not just about the, the panning. Yes, it sounds more on the right when you put it on. It's about the accuracy of pinpointing the sound, you know? Like, you know, like, if you put it off, it's like you can tell the violins are in this range here, right? If you put it on, the angle is actually narrower, like, you can pinpoint them more easily, as well as feeling more heart band, but it's... Like, the zone of which you can detect them is more accurate, because of the... because you actually respect the timing difference, and you actually create, by inverting the channels, you actually transfer the timing difference that tells your ears it's on the left to the right. Uh, many other plugins, but uh, many other plugins. That's gonna really improve my. Oh, I need to add this to my course. I'm gonna add this to my course right now. Well, not right now, but after this. Let me just actually make a text file just so I don't forget. Um, invert swap channels. Why didn't I think of that sooner? No, no, it's not a specific plugin. Basically, all it's doing is inverting the left and the right channel. So it's transferring the left to the right and transferring the right to the left. Like, I think there is lots of free plugins that can do that. Like, uh, even in FL Studio Basic, like a basic plugin. Like, there's like a knob somewhere to swap the channels. Um, I just never thought of doing that, you know? Okay, let's, let's continue. Yeah, most, uh, most, most DAWs have something that can do that. Okay, uh, that's good. Let's see if I can pan more stuff. I have the ensemble strings, which I guess I'm gonna leave in the middle. No, that's seriously like a big, big, big game changer for me. Like I haven't had, haven't had such like a game changer in like six months. That's why I'm so being hyper right now. I'm serious. It's really, really actually useful. It means like any library, you can put it wherever you want it in like an accurate way now. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, I could move on to the hits now, just to do a first pass on the hits. Of course, the brass and the strings are not perfect yet, but it's fine. Actually, the, the synth first, because hits are just annoying to mix. Uh, 
Like it's gonna take a long time to listen back and forth and stuff, so. Well, actually, we still have uh, one hour and a half. That's good. That's good. I'm gonna stop at 10. Okay, so let's start with the intro ambiences and let's see what we can mix. If it's a bit quiet, hold on, I'm gonna just uh, lower my mic. Actually, just... It's fine, you can still hear it. Okay, there's like five five ambiences, so I need to see what's playing at the same time. That's that's like my own song with someone else. It's like a collab track. Uh, it's like a collaboration track with Julia. Okay, so I have two similar ambiences here. So I could just leave them in the middle, right? Because they're stereo tracks, so they sound wide already. What I could try though is to pan one left, one right to get even more of a wide sound. So not for everything, I'm still gonna leave some pads in the middle, but some pads I'm gonna pan. Actually, maybe I could pan the noisy, the, like the more dissonant pads on the sides. Oh my god, there's so many pads here. It's just gonna be confusing. Okay, that's a, that's a... I'm just gonna rename some stuff otherwise. So that's a pulse... Pulse bass. High high bass. That's another pad. Maybe chords. Chord pad one. Chord pad two. Noise pad one. That's a pulse. Pulse high. Okay, that's just a noise happening at one time exactly, so I'm just gonna leave it centered. Because this noise actually quickly disappears in the intro. It's at the right beginning, so nice pad to I'm just gonna leave it centered for sure. So these pads here kind of play together the whole time. So what that means is that I can actually pan them and get some and the pad number three kind of gets just introduced in the end, so I can't just pan it. So I guess the chord pad one and two are the ones which are the most complementary with each other. So we can actually pan them. Uh, so now I have to see. One of them will be louder. One of them will be louder, and I also have a viola playing at the same time. So I can compensate... I can compensate with the strings on one side to make the these sustained pads kind of lean towards a certain side, and compensate with the, the, the ensemble strings actually, maybe. Okay, so the ensemble strings on the on the right, by default. Kind of, because there is a bass. 
and then there's violin, so... What if I put them on the right? And I make the sound of the pads feel like it's leaning to the left. So the quietest pad is still going to be on the right. Like 60. This one like 40, 40 to the left. And the strings on the right. It's okay if you're late. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty good image. So it's it's just wider than just leaving everything in the middle, even though you could just leave everything in the middle. It's a bit more interesting this way. Yeah, I might just fine tune that fine tune that laser, but that's basically the idea. Uh, just to kind of make the panning feel less extreme and just to blend everything a bit more. I'm just gonna create a, a bus that's gonna group these two um, chord pad things here. And this bus is gonna have a slight reverb, and that reverb is gonna kind of make the panning feel less accurate, so it feels a bit more blended. So, um, if I just solo the, the, the bus now, so just these two tracks here, if I put a bit of a reverb on them. See? The reverb kind of recenters everything because you get the reflections on the left bouncing on the right coming back, so it's kind of recentering everything. Uh, and in that case, I'm not trying to add more tail, right? I'm just trying to make the panning feel a bit more natural by um, making sure that all the other reflections are not just on the left. Because the issue is that I'm panning this sound, which is already quite wet and has a tail. I I'm panning all of it. That means that I'm panning the reverb as well. The reverb that was baked in the raw sound, I'm panning as well. So it feels a bit less natural than the normal room. So if I add a bit of reverb, just subtly, it's going to make it feel more natural like it's in, in the real room again. See that? No, reverb. Reverb again. So not too much of it, but just like maybe like 40% on the send. Okay, and Actually, I could also achieve the same thing, but yeah, never mind. Uh, it's too complicated. Mm, it's gonna be a waste of time. Okay, so. Yeah, and the noise pads I'm just gonna leave in the middle. Because they just happen at different times and they're too different from each other. So actually, this, this sounds a bit. small. Let me try some effects some maybe like um, a room that's cool actually in no room no room sounds very centered very mono room if you're wearing headphones you will hear the difference uh, so it sounds less direct uh, which is good let me check for any kind of rumble. It's fine. I don't want any kind of any I don't want like any kind of tail and I don't really mind the sound, but I just want more less less direct of a mono direct sound in your face. Okay, so that's good. I might just send it to the reverb also just a bit. The choir reverb just a bit. I mix on speakers, I check on speakers, but I mix on headphones, but I have some speakers as well. Uh, I have some JBL uh, LSR 308, just to kind of check the mix. Since my room is a bit shitty, I have to use headphones, which I know really well. So it's actually not bothering me because I, I just really know these headphones, so I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, if I mix on my speakers, my room just would be too bad and kind of mess up the frequency response and 
I just wouldn't trust my room enough. It would be too random, you know? With my headphones, it's always the same sound. So for my particular situation, I would rather use headphones. Ella! Hey, what's up? Uh, okay, Tom. Welcome back, welcome back. Okay, so just a bit on the... On the verb, actually, I can put the strings reverb, I guess. Not too much. Like, 20%. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there is some things to keep in mind when you mix on headphones. Like, there is a few things that you need to think about a bit differently than speakers, but if you know what to listen for and what to check, you will be fine. Um. So. This noise here. gonna get cut a bit. Yeah. That's uh, Seneza HD 800s. It's pretty much the best Seneza headphones. I wouldn't recommend anyone to buy these because they're pretty expensive and you can actually get most of the quality with cheaper models like um, HD 600. If you buy a HD 600 it's like 300 euros and you can get like 80% of the quality of this so you don't need this but I mean for me it's a bit different because it's more like an investment because it's my job but if you just like don't want to spend like a thousand five hundred on headphones just buy like the HD 600s or like a, a kind of good open back um, 300 euro headphone like Bayer Dynamic Sennheiser and honestly like you will get a good flat studio sound that you can really trust um, you don't have to buy this honestly I like them, but they're definitely not worth the price, you know. When you buy in the high end, it's always uh, diminishing returns. Um, don't feel like you're going to get something magical with this compared to the 300 euro model, you know. It's a, it's a bit wider, of course, it's a bit bigger, but it's not... It's not like a... It's not twice better, you know what I mean? Uh, M50X... It's a bit too bassy and it's closed, right? Yeah, it's closed. Um, you don't get the same stereo accuracy. Um, to, be, to be clear, I listened to the HD 600s and there is way more stereo accuracy in terms of um, the stereo field in these compared to the 600s. But the 600s have a very flat response, which is great. So just avoid closed headphones because you will get a very skewed perception of the stereo field. Um, with open back, you get a uh, much better Killing for the stereo field as well, like the, the, the panning. Uh, okay, I need to keep mixing. So, these pads in the intro. Alright. <laughs> mixing and beats. <laughs> so, this pulse is cool. This pulse is also cool. Uh, I can maybe EQ it a bit, just to reduce a bit of honk. And I don't need a super low bass, because I have actually a low pulse, taking care of that, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So I have these two together. Uh, this one sounds a bit small and too direct, so maybe I can put a room also on it to add a little bit more ambience around it. Not really trying to add a tail, just trying to add an ambience around it. Um, gonna use the same thing as usual. See? I mean, that's a bit extreme. Uh, I want to just have a subtle, subtle ambience. So, gonna load some of this, load an uh, ambience patch. So, an ambience is basically like a very short reverb. 
so like a decay around 500 milliseconds so you can't really feel any tail it's more like early reflections to put it around the space not really feeling any kind of tail at all uh where is it and my ambiences yeah there are something like large ambience So I don't really want it. I don't really want it to untighten the sound. So something that's very neutral in terms of of the tail. Uh, so like maybe a small one. Yeah. See. Exactly what I want. Maybe a bit more, a bit bigger, but mid. Ah, uh, sounds a bit weird. I don't know. Medium and dark. It's a bit muddy. Uh, that's good. Okay, so just a bit of that. See, it's very subtle. It's less direct. Again, less direct. This is a pretty big, pretty big, pretty wet track, so I don't want some something that's too direct. Um, and maybe a bit more of a treble boost. Actually, maybe if I can distort it a bit more. Yeah, Pro Q2. I mean, there is no reason to not use it. What if I distort it a bit more? Um, radiator. Actually, let me, let me see. I have something nice. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe this. Currently destroying your ears. I'm sorry about that. Um, it's just not. It, it's just not adjusting. It's not adjusting the output. It's like resetting the output whenever I, I drive it. Okay. Yeah, I like that. It's like it's like not obvious, but it's a bit more interesting. Ah, that's a bit much, actually. It's like more sharp. Okay. Yeah, it's just a bit more sharp. I like this. Yeah, the, the levels are off now. I think we need to reset our ears a bit, because uh, like I can't really hear anything at this point. Try to let me try to balance the strings and the brass. Let me try to balance the string and the brass. 
it's like now that we mixed a lot of stuff kind of independently, it's good to kind of start to take everything into consideration. The brass is a bit too sizzly. Maybe just on certain instruments. Maybe the lead is too loud. Oops. You see, I need these high violins way louder. Actually, more like 75, 80. I don't know. I, I think I measured it once. You know what? Actually, I'm, maybe I'm gonna just like... Hold on. Actually, let me, let me bring my sound meter. And it's gonna give me a little break also. Just give me two minutes. Okay, so I have this. It's gonna tell me how loud I how loud I am. I think it's fine if it's just one ear cap. I guess. It's like 72 dB. Um, I can probably check on speakers. What if I play the track on speakers and kind of try to emulate what I'm hearing? I will tell you. I'm just gonna mute myself because it's gonna... Seventy-four. Seventy-four. I don't know, yeah, I guess I'm mixing... I don't feel the need for 80 dB, I guess. 85, uh, honestly, like, 85 is super hot. I don't think you need, like, 85, actually. I, I got it wrong. It's, like, more like 75 max. Yeah, okay, so let's keep going. Uh, maybe we can do some perks, because perks are interesting. We just have one hour, and we haven't touched the perks at all. Um, Wait, this that's a low boom, okay. Let's okay, let's do the first thing that we should do. It is grouping the grouping the different layers of perks, which actually just doing layering. So the stuff that's playing exactly the same thing, we can Um Yeah, that's hundred percent instinct. This 
the tail on this is crazy. Honestly, I don't even want that tail. Um, this is basically like there is two layers. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a group which is like hits, big hits. There is two layers. There is a base layer and a high layer, and the high layer has a crazy tail, which I don't really want. So hit high hit low. So we're probably gonna gate it because the it's annoying. If I gate the tail from the high hit, it's gonna be less washy and not kind of interfere with other stuff. So I'm gonna try to gate it. Otherwise, it's just like a pad. Who wants this pad, you know? I think it's like that by default. Uh, Julien, if you're still watching, can you check if it's like that by default on the high layer of the hit? Uh, or if you put a reverb on it? I, I will ask him later anyway, but... Uh, because that's, that's kind of too wet. Let, let me ask him. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh, thanks. Well, then I just have to gate it, I guess. Uh, so FabFilter Pro G, it is. Where is it? There. Uh, yeah, if you can maybe double check in the session if there is internal reverb. Because it would be better to turn it off um, in this time. So, uh, I need to detect the sample really well. So to detect it, I'm going to roll off the base in the sidechain filter. So I'm going to have an internal sidechain filter that's going to just detect the high end to get a more accurate image of every hit. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting. Well, I'm just going to show people how, how to use a gate anyway, but if you can actually remove a reverb, it would be helpful, but it's fine. So I, I'm creating like, that's, that's, what the compre that's what the gate will listen to, right? That's not the final sound. That's just what the gate will hear internally, and it's going to create a more articulate trigger um, for the end sound. So, right? Something like that. But what we're actually hearing is like the main sound, right? So, but now I have a great trigger, right? So I can just trick the release however I want and get exactly the right sound. Uh, so, look ahead, I'm gonna put a bit of it just to make sure that I'm not triggering a bit too late. See? Magic. The attack I'm gonna put a bit longer, uh, so I'm not... That's great. So now I actually get like the, the right amount of reverb, just what I want. I can put a bit more actually. Maybe I can make it hold a bit, just holding a bit. Okay, I don't really like the, the base here. It's just, a, it's just a high layer, so I'm gonna roll off the base as well. Um, actually, even before the gate, but it doesn't matter because the gate is just listening to the highs, right? Doesn't really matter. Um... Sure. Uh, PM me on Facebook. Uh, PM me on Facebook. We can talk about that. Oh, amazing. Turn off the reverb. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can re export this, uh, you don't have to do it now. I can do other stuff, but. Yeah, 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 no rush. Okay, so, but like, you guys, if you have a sound which you can't really fix the reverb and it's baked into the sound and you want to shorten it, 
see the gates, what he's doing. I'm just gonna disable it so you can hear. See that? With the gate you can actually disable the, the constant constant bed of noise. Just keep the right envelope that you want right after the transient. Ideal to not blur the sound more than you need to. I produce... I produce uh, trailer music. Uh, right now it's trailer music. So for movies and stuff. Okay, um, I'm gonna probably remove the gate later because since he can fix the tail, I'm not gonna need that anymore. I want a little natural reverb in it. Oh, you mean it's like a mix of close and far? Yeah, I do want the far mics because the close mics sound a bit... You know what? Like, maybe I can just keep the sound of the gate, because it's actually pretty good. Like... M maybe don't bother, actually, with re exporting because... Like, I can just tweak it however I want with the gate, it's pretty much perfect, so... Actually, never mind, don't bother with re exporting Okay, so there is some snares here. Okay, so the snails, I'm gonna try to make a bit more punchy. Because they're not very punchy and they're a bit boomy. So first I'm gonna clear them with some low mid cut and then I'm gonna enhance the transient. Enhance the transient. So the mud is 200 here. Okay. And the, the EQ is alright, so I'm just gonna try to enhance the transient with some parallel transient enhancing um, slash parallel compression. So. Right? So we have the extreme, we have the extreme on 100%. I think it's gonna get placed. At some point. I think there is a good chance. Preferous guys, that it gets placed. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, so um, I'm gonna kind of mix in a bit of that transient sound, of course not all of it. Of course not 100% because it sounds horrible, right? But that's the spirit, right? That's what we want more of. That's just what we want more of into the sound, so just a bit. Twenty percent. Right? So... These drums are pretty good, but... They're pretty muddy, and... Uh, of course, they're, they... I mean, I'm gonna use them, obviously, but... I would like to clear them a bit, if possible. Uh, so, to clear them... First step is to add a bit of EQ. Uh, maybe delete some of the... Lowest rumble. Maybe like 60 hertz or something. So already just removing a bit of the useless stuff. And then maybe a bit more punch, but not too much of the high stuff because... That's just gonna feel too light in the mix because that stuff is gonna just pop in the mix. And the mid-range you will hear less, so if I just boost too much of that... 
All you're gonna feel is just like a shaker, like a tick tick tick. It's gonna be too much, see? We just play in the mix. And you still want to feel some, like there is some meat, right? So we're gonna boost a bit under that. Yeah, that's better. Before, after. So that's gonna cut through more, obviously. Um, I'm gonna put this EQ first before my mix rack, actually. Then I'm gonna hit my mix rack, and maybe I'm gonna add some saturation just to kind of make the highs a bit more popping because this jam is pretty dark. So. Some tube. Some tube stuff. It's getting making it a bit brighter. Yeah, actually guys, I'm gonna probably play the track from start to finish because people just didn't hear the whole thing. Uh, on every insert, it's not a compressor, it's a channel um, console emulation. So what it's doing is basically just adding a tiny amount of distortion just to emulate a desk. A NIV desk. So I'm basically mining, uh, mixing on a fake fake uh, NIV console. Okay, so that's that's clearer. Maybe we can do the transient thing also as well. On oh, oh, just a bit, maybe just a bit. Um, Just a bit. Uh, to kind of kind of tighten it because it's kind of overlapping. Like you can hear like the drums are kind of overlapping each other, so maybe we can tighten. Oh yeah, heck yeah. If you don't have this plugin, alternatively you can use a compressor with a long attack to Detect the transients and start compressing after the transients, so you single out all the attacks pretty much. Uh, let me show you how you can do it. If you don't have this plugin, you take a normal compressor uh, like that. Uh, like that, you you put a pretty hard ratio, maybe like six, and you make a knee pretty hard knee, and then you you compress a bit, but you make sure that the attack is long enough so that you actually catch. I mean, you let the transient through, and then you compress, and then you put the release like. 100 because it's a pretty fast rhythm and then you put a sidechain filter to make sure that you it's just like the gate trick before right we're, we're gonna single out the highs so that the compressor can more accurately trigger because the compressor is just gonna listen to the highs right so it's gonna be more accurate so we can listen so co the compressor is gonna be reacting to a more accurate signal and, and the bass isn't gonna miss trigger it because the bass is very long right it's very rumbly so sometimes it can miss trigger the compressor and you just want to detect the transients here, so we we sing, we make a pretty sharp sound. And then we compress it. And it gives you that kind of smashed sound. Um, which is good. But I prefer to use this plugin because it does a better job. Um, it's kind of smarter. It's just like it's a very dramatic effect, so you can just mix some of it in. Like 30 is good. So let's try without plugins.
Yeah, it might seem a bit overhyped with the heist, but remember we have tons of layers we need the percussion to cut through. Otherwise... See, it's cutting through just right, because if you make it too dark, it's not gonna cut through, and you're gonna have to overboost it to actually be able to hear it. And then you're gonna be boosting the lows and the mud as well. So by having a good amount of, uh, of highs, you're making sure that you can hear the percussion even though it's not too loud in the mix, which is good. Um, so. Okay, so that's just my fast hits. And then I have some impacts, so I'm gonna create an impact bus. I think I just have a... I think I have like two samples for the impacts, a low and a high as well. Let me check. Actually, generally, I call it mega because it's like bigger than the hits. So. I think it's just one. Yeah. No, wait, there is a high layer. Yeah, so this high layer is cool, but it's a bit muddy as well. I definitely don't want that. Yeah, the VOD will be um, unlisted for a bit, because we have to make sure that the publisher isn't going to mind having this on YouTube. Uh, and then when like after a bit, it's probably going to end up public. So if you want to rewatch it, save the link for now uh, on the URL. Save the link, save the link. Because it's going to be uh, unlisted uh, after that. So not too much of the mud. Okay, that's a pretty good thing, but the thing is, this layout is for a big impact. It's a very long impact, right? It's not a fast hit. So we might need to put a long reverb on this. too short I think it's too dry so let's route it to the mega both of these so this is a mega high this is mega low um, impacts mega low and we're gonna not put reverb on the low one but put reverb on the high oh yeah I forgot to replay it sorry put reverb on the high one so let me just quickly finish making this Yeah, so it's not really mixed. Uh, I'm gonna play it first and then I will continue working on this. Okay, let's go. It's actually maybe gonna help me notice some very big level issues, so that's good. Let's go. I will drink something, be right back.
Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the, the Bram being like in the wrong base here. Actually, it's nice, but... It's kind of leading to the final bass line, so I get it, but... Yeah, I guess I can just make it quieter. Um... Yeah, yeah, so I need to take care of the hits, I agree. So. So it's just like the high layer is too, is too short, so if I add a super long plate, probably like a plate is gonna be good. So let me grab my good old Valhalla plate, my trusty Valhalla plate, which is what I use on every track because there is so many different plate types that you can actually get like a, the perfect sound for every drum every time. So I just love it. Um, okay. I'm just gonna put, so this is basically like a parallel chain. Uh, in FL Studio you can create something called Patcha, which is like a, a chain within a chain. So this is the plugin chain, right? One, two, three, four, all the slots. And within the Patcha you can have a chain. So I have this direct link to the input, to the output, and I have a parallel path um, going to a reverb, to a EQ, and out. So this allows me to kind of have control over the drum reverb just in one place. Yeah, it's good, right? And I can just tweak my reverb here. So if I just leave it like 100%, 100%, this is going to basically be 50% wet. If I make sure that the mix is 100%, then this is going to be like 50% wet, right? So, so I want a reverb that's long, not too shimmery. Okay, brass is good, but it's too shimmery. And it's too muddy. So my reverb is going to be filtered a bit. I don't know, it's too muddy still. Um, I think it's because of the, the initial EQ actually, if I reduce that a bit. Yeah. Better. Maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe more highs. This a bit needs more life, you know. Needs a bit more life. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you mean, Daniel, with uh, that. Okay, see you later. Yeah, thanks for watching. And thanks for the compliment. So, about this low layer, I might also tweak slightly the... Um, the tail, because it's a bit long, but I want a long tail though. So I need to be careful to not... Good, uh, thank you. I need to... I need to... Raise my raise my low hits. Yeah, see the tail is just unnecessarily long, which is just gonna be more muddy than we need to. So raise the impact. That's it. Hmm. Yeah. See, I don't think I need like the very end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just the very end is not needed on the on the low layer, so I'm gonna gate it slightly. 
still to keep a long feed just to kind of remove the useless end part of this. So same thing, sidechain to make sure the gate is being triggered accurately. Which it will be. Um, look ahead. Um, okay. It's always the same sample, so it should be very accurate. So now there is... Okay, so it needs to be long, but not too long, so... Yeah, see, there's like a, a, a t you can hear the sub, right? At the end. There. You don't want this coming back. So you can make it longer. But... I would have to see, maybe it's going to be useful in the track. I think maybe it's a bit short right now, so... Maybe something like... Oh, there is a problem that I forgot to notice. Like, there is like a ramp up on the hits. If I gate it, I'm kind of getting rid of the ramp up, which was nice. The whoosh. That's annoying. Uh... I guess it's not that important after all, so... Maybe I could automate the ends, but it's... I'm lazy. So... So for now, I'm not gonna bother with that. I think I can use even more tail on the on the high thing here, so maybe like four seconds. You know? Why not? Five seconds? Nice. That's getting closer to what I want. But hits, honestly, they take so much time because like every little thing is important with the hits. Every little EQ move will do a massive difference with the, the turn, so like little volume differences also. So it's like hits, you need to really fine tune ways, come back, fine tune again. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool evening. I'm really enjoying this. I still have some synths to mix and stuff. We have 30 minutes. Maybe 30 minutes we can finish mixing some synth because it's more relaxing than the hits. Um, it's almost 10 also. So uh, the choir was the choir was a little bit too telephony at like 2k, and I didn't like that. So let me try to fix that. Like maybe 3k. I guess I didn't like this.
Yeah, there's a mud, there's a constant mud, which I hate. Okay, yeah, so I, I I I saw it. It's around like 600, and it's basically kind of like the walls adding up together and building up something that nice. So we're gonna do multiband. Yeah, and that's gonna prevent the the sound to get too loud here. All right. Ratio 5. Great. Now it's defined. And I may just cut tiny bit of 300, tiny bit. My five, my five multiband as well. nice let me just check the frequency response real quick yeah that's normal it's always basic my the travel tracks it's always basic uh, it's a bit high but it's pretty close to what I want and the mids are pretty flat as well which is great Conflicts with reverbs, uh, string snares. Okay, so what do you think is too wide? Let me see. Yeah, that's fine. Dif different rooms, you need to. Uh, I mean, if you do a whole reverb, a whole reverb is gonna sound completely shit on drums, that's the problem. You can't just use one reverb for the same thing, uh, um, because they just don't work, you know? Like, it's like, I think like for uh, strings, brass, and quiet, I like to put the same type of reverb, but uh, whole reverbs on drums is just not really working for me, like it's just not exciting enough. <laughs> uh, it's not Lion's Gate, but it's Lion's Heart Productions. <laughs> uh, close enough. Uh, and I think like you can you need to use different reverbs otherwise it's not working. Not each instrument actually the the strings have their own reverb the brass have their own but it's the same patch you know so it's the same room so it's the same thing basically. And um, yeah for the hits it's more like you know as long as it blends I think it's fine. You don't need to put in the same room like you can make several reverbs blend together I think, and it's actually better because. If you just put the same reverb on, on, on every sound, it's not going to blend necessarily the best way you could. I, I'm not really hearing like a, uh, a clash in terms of stereo width. I would say maybe they're a bit narrow. The drums, if anything, are a bit narrow. You need reverb, otherwise the hits will feel too dry, especially in the context of the mix. You know what? I think you made me think of something though. Uh, the high layers could be a bit wider. Maybe. 
maybe. Especially on the fast hits, actually. Hold on. So I have a low layer here and I have a high layer here. Yeah, right. That's, that's the high. That's the low. Okay. I think you're right, this one sounds a bit mono. And you know what, actually, that's because there is no reverb on it yet. There is no reverb whatsoever. I'm gonna try to share the same reverb as they used on the high, on the high layer of the mega hits, uh, on the fast hits as well. But a bit less of it. That's nice, it gives more width, but a bit less of it. Uh, less long. Um, maybe two seconds. What? CPU, CPU? Yeah, I use uh, the smart disable because why wouldn't you, you know? It's like free CPU. Yeah, so, so it's, it's smaller. Uh, there is a weird resonance, which I don't like. Yeah. There is a resonance. Um, Where is it? Play. Must be here. Yeah. There you go. That's annoying, so I'm gonna notch it down. See? It's almost gone. Okay, that's good. So now my hits are gonna be a bit more in line with each other. The boss the fast and the boss the mega. Yep, they're more coherent. Because I'm using the same reverb even though it's a different decay time. Yeah, uh, I'm not completely satisfied with the tone of the drums, but that's not bad. So I'm gonna continue with some, with some more. Uh, there is still like some shakers and some stuff I need to do there, but I wanna switch to some synth a bit because it's fun. So, oh yeah, the lead synth. Um, so I have synth strings one and two, and that's basically like a lead melody. Which is kind of playing with the brass as well. Okay, so that lead is a bit sad right now. So why don't we make it happy? Um. It's too narrow. When something is too narrow, you take a double and it instantly becomes wide. Boom. Doublers are great because they don't really denature the sound, but they make everything wider for free, basically. Just like you have something kind of not wide enough, but this it's wide, and it doesn't even sound weird. It, it only sounds weird if you put the the extra voices too loud. So maybe like minus eight for this, so that it's not too loud, but it's still wider, you know. And a bit of blending reverb.
So it should blend more. And let's notch a bit of an annoying mid-range. Because trust me, this one is going to be peaking in the mix. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this sound is pretty sad. Like, I, I... but in the mix, in the mix, it's decent. You know what, maybe I could make it more interesting, like it's a bit too plain because it's lacking some harmonic, some crunch, some whatever. So, but there is like a crunch, but it's like a high buzzy kind of crunch, which I don't like. So maybe I'm gonna try some distortion if, if it doesn't work. I, I don't like the fizz. So I'm gonna try some multiband distortion just to distort one harmonic in multiband, like the, the bass line or some, I mean the, the fundamental, I mean. If I just, um, if I just saturate the fundamental, maybe I can get more crunch without the ugly uh, top end. Distortion. Um, for that, I only know one. I only know one that does this really well. It's the Fab Filter Saturn. Because we can just select a band. Like that. I think it's just too plain of a sound. Um, maybe a delay, a ping pong delay could help if I had the temp. Uh, I have the tempo or not? I, I think I have it. Yeah, I have it. Um, it it's 110, right? Yeah, so I think it's 110. Um, but I, I think that was right because I, I tempo tapped it. But it was like oscillating between 19 and 110. Uh, we did it at the beginning of the stream. I wonder if it's 1.9 or 1.10. Uh, Julien, if you know if it's 1.9 or if it's 1.10. Uh, and for some reason, my drums are not lining up on the grid. I don't know why. Maybe it's because... Yeah, okay. It's weird. My FL is still showing in 4.4, right? That's 4 bars, 4 bars, 4 bars, like in different colors. Yet, I put the project in, in, in 6.8, so I don't get it. Like, it's a bit dumb. That's why it's not lining up. I, I was wondering why it's not lining up, you know? It's weird, I put 6-8, but my project is still showing in 4-4, four, four, right? Because that's 4 bars, 4 bars, 4 bars. Different colors. I don't know. FL Mysteries. Ah! I think I can do a time signature change on FL. Uh, keep the rest. See ya. Oh, it's Keep Forest. It's a company. Cool. Nice. Trailer, trailer company. And I mean, trailer sound design packs, like uh, libraries and stuff. That's cool. Nice to have you here. Nice. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay, so I, I need to find the time signature change uh, in FL. Because I actually need it here for because of a delay. A uh, ping pong delay or something. Actually, it's fine, because I just want to use the delay in that sound, so it's already 6-8, so then it's fine. I'm just going to forget about the saturation for now, I'm just going to try the delay. Oh, that's cool. Okay. See, it, it feels more with the delay, a uh, ping pong. Maybe a bit of modulation as well to make it.
Ouch. Hold on, I, I need to be able to route my, my metronome through a trailer track. Yeah, it's through 125. I can actually lower it. <laughs> yeah. I think the delay is right. I just want to check with like a drum or something. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah, it's, it's off. Uh, is the tempo 100 or 109? Hold on. Yeah, it must be. Hold on, it must be. It looks like it's lining up, actually. It looks like it's good. Uh Yeah, okay, right. Nice. It's one it's one on one hundred and nine. Okay, so now I can have my delay on, on this thing. It's just making it huge, which is fine. And I have a river behind it. I'm gonna create a bus so that I'm able to control it more easily. It's gonna be the synth string... Uh, synth... String bus. Uh, it's gonna be more practical, you know. All of these to this group, to this, maybe like a, just a, and not too much modulation, just one. Eighty-two times two. Are you sure? Because like it, it, it's lining up when I'm on one hundred and nine. Perfectly, it seems. 82 times 2, it's... it's. It can't be 82, is it? Let me try. Oh yeah. I guess, yeah. Then why was it working on 109? I guess because it's like a triplet or whatever. So it looked like it was lining up because we're in 6 8 or something like that. So I thought it was lining up. Probably it was a triplet or something, I don't know. I'm not good enough with theory to know what was going on. Uh, but yeah. Either way, the delay is good. Now it's a bit slow. Maybe we can do a um, slightly different, slightly faster one then. Oh, actually. A dotted one, maybe a dotted knot. Sounding pretty cool, right? I think I'm gonna reduce the feedback on this delay though. Yeah, 
Okay, that's fine. What's it all? Um. Okay. What else? A cute little synth here. Yeah, that's why it's a big difference. That's why I'm thinking like 109 might be like a multiple or like a triplet or something, I don't know. No idea. Oh, okay, I got a down here. Um Uh, I think it's a downer track that plays a lot of downers. Let me see where they are. Okay, so I got the big downer here. But there is... Okay. It's two different downers on the same track. And Julien, can you separate these two downers for tomorrow? Because I'm going to distort the first one, but I don't want to distort this one because it's already brighter. I just need like a bright, bright down number. It's actually, uh, no, don't do anything. I can separate by myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. Uh, actually, yeah, I can. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I'm just going to see if I can do it by myself in a clean way. That is going to be a mess. I can yeah, isolate them. Like, I don't know, yeah, yeah, I think I can just isolate a portion and make it unique uh, as its own track, but it's not like, since there is, it's like, kind of intertwined, it's better if you actually, yeah, uh, for tomorrow if you can re-render two separately. I can, but like, I want to make like a different mixer track. And like, I would have to have two things, two different, uh, two different uh, mixer track entries. Actually, you know what, uh, I think, I, wait, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Maybe I can. So if I cut there, uh, if I cut there and I cut there, can I like consolidate, how do you consolidate two bits of audio in different places of the same track, in like one track? So how, how do I just select this part and this part and just make one, like one long track? I don't know. Uh, I need to select them maybe first. If someone knows, it would be nice to know, because I don't know. It's a new thing in FL20, I guess. Because before you couldn't do that, I think. Ah, triplet fill is gonna nine. See, I was right. I was right. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. I have to drag them into an empty track. Okay. I can make unique a sample. You know what? I'm just gonna do it a quick, dirty way. Make unique a sample. No. Just make unique. And then make unique this one. So it's gonna be too. It's not the cleanest thing ever, but who cares? It's fine. So I just make it unique there. Where is it? 39, 39, so it should be right, yeah. It should be, I see them, great, I see them. So then I can route both of these to a track like that, maybe, this one. And so both on 61. Yeah, it, it's okay, it's, it's, it's good enough, no need, to, no need for you to do it, Julia. It's, it's clean enough this way. Yeah. So I got them on this track here. For some reason, the first one is louder. Even though the gain is the same. W why is this one quieter than this one? This one is quite tough for no reason. I'm confused. 
Oh. Oh, that's because there is... Wait, it's playing on two tracks at the same time. What's going on? Oh, I got it. I got it because it's hiding under it. Oh my god, I'm so dumb sometimes. Okay, so it's hiding under it, so I just need to... Delete it. <laughs> That's why I hate doing this. It's not really practical. One, two... Okay, this one is alone. That's why. This one was doubled, so obviously. Okay. <sighs> Good. So this is gonna be down now. Distorted. Then down now this, and it's gonna be down now smooth. Down now smooth. Yeah, uh... Alright, so next... I, I need to, to look it up if there is like a feature to, to do it. I know you could do it like by cutting, but as you can see it's a bit of a mess. Like I need to see if there is a feature to just select bits of a track and just re-render it to another track. Would be dope. I don't know if it's possible. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to go guys, it's already 3 hours and yeah, I'm getting a bit tired. Let's just listen to it once again and maybe try to fix any big level things. I don't know, let's just listen to it again. One last time. I'm actually surprised how much mixing I did in three hours. I, I walk faster when I stream. Out here, the impacts.
yeah, uh, there's obviously level issues still and lots of work to be done, but I would consider this maybe 50, 60% done. I guess 60% done or something. That's fun. So yeah, guys, that was, that was really fun. I hope you liked it. Before I end it, if you want to rewatch it, if you want to give it to your friends, save the link in the URL right now because it's going to be non... Uh, it's going to be not privated, but non-listed. Uh, if you want to send it to someone or whatever, just save the link. Um, it's going to be public in a bit, but not right now. So if you want to rewatch it right now, like tomorrow or something, save it. Yeah, we watched the new FL Studio 20 video. <laughs> I watched it long ago, but I need to do it again. Um, so yeah, save the link if you want to rewatch it. And yeah, that, that was really fun. And uh, by the way, this track is going to be in my uh, the advanced version of my course as like a full mix deconstruction. So I just give you a bit of an insight on, on the mix here, but I'm going to finish it by myself and then I'm going to do like a full mix deconstruction about this track as well. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So thanks for watching and... See you later. So the TMA people, I will, I will talk to you in the group and people who come from different places, then thanks for watching. It was really good to have you here. So bye guys.